Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome. Glad to have you here. I got involved with suppressors when a father came to me and said, I've got an autistic child, and I want him to go, to go deer hunting with me. But the noise from the rifle, he, he can't stand it. And so I started trying to get a suppressor. And the, the, the government is interfering with, with me being able to get a suppressor by delaying uh, their side of processing suppressors. Getting involved with that, I want to tell you that in 2013, ATF launched an electronic program for firearm owners to purchase suppressors and other firearm accessories. However, this system was taken down in April of 2014 due to technical issues. The previous ATF director promised it would be back online in a short period of time and processing would be reduced to 100 days. However, the e-form system was not <laughs> launched again until December of 2021 and has done little to streamline the process of purchasing suppressors and other firearms accessories. I'd like these questions to be answered. Why did it take seven years for ATF to relaunch the new e-form system? The committee has provided you with ample funding over the years. Why is the e-form system still experiencing issues? How has the funding been used to update the system? And finally, according to ATF website, it takes an average of 270 days or about nine months for processing applications. The initial promise for processing applications was supposed to be 100 days. Why are the applications taking so long? And I want all those questions answered. Yeah, so um, I don't know that I can answer all of them today. I can follow up, but I'll tell you what I can answer today, of course. Uh, so, Congressman, uh, uh, as you said, the system, the uh, electronic processing system, is uh, back up and running. I would agree with you that the processing times are too long. We have recently surged uh, uh, resources to try and get more people working on those. We're dealing with two issues that are related at once, which is one where there's still a backlog of those paper applications, and at the same time, you have the electronic system. Um, I think actually the number I checked before I, I came over, I think the most recent number is a little less than you said, but it's still too long. I think it's a month shorter. We're going to continue to work to drive those numbers down. Uh, it is a legitimate question and, and concern. Uh, it is not our intent to interfere with or to in any way delay. It's just taking too long to process these applications, and, and uh, I commit to you that we will work on it. As to, as, to, as to what happened during that period where the system was down, um, I've been at ATF now for uh, eight months or so. I do not know what happened back then. I can check into it, obviously, for you. Get that inf information. I would like to have that. Of course. Um, and, you know, it, this is not James Bond. These are American citizens who have hearing issues. My roommate is a hunter, my college roommate, and now he's deaf as a post because of fire of, of shooting deer with a, with a rifle. It, it, it helps people with their hearing. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing to have a suppressor on a rifle. And, and anybody that thinks it is, is mistaken. So I would appreciate very much if you would give me the information I asked for in detail. Of course. And, you know, obviously our authority begins with Congress, right? So Congress identified, not, not ATF, it was Congress that identified in the National Firearms Act suppressors as being subject to these increased uh, regulatory scheme, but the processing times but not are... not delaying them till it becomes so onerous that the person says, I give up. I'll, I'll shoot without it. That would not be proper. I agree with that. That is not our intent, and we need to get those processing times lower. Thank you. 